wordings of Al Imam Al Baqir Salawatullah wa Salamu alayhi ba da salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He said, O oh, Jabir, do you think it is suffice, it is enough for someone to say, I love Ahlul Bayt and I am a follower of Ahlul Bayt, yet by God, these followers have certain prerequisites. So it's not good enough to say, I love Ahlul Bayt. Right from the start, right? Right from the start. That's my problem. I get excited, right? Not at you. I'm not shouting at you, you know? I just want to hear myself, right? So he says, there are certain prerequisites. So Jabir says, what are they? The Imam says, by God, those who claim our, uh, our love are firstly very conscious of Allah. Allah is always in front of them. Just like Rasulullah said, worship Allah as if you can see him. And since you cannot see him, then make sure you have the belief system and the aqidah and the thought and the methodology that he is seeing you. Whatever you do, wherever you are, he's observing your action. Those who have taqwa of Allah and obedience, so they have obedience of Allah, and they were known among their peace, yani wherever they exist, they are known by the following qualities. Humbleness. Humbleness. They're humble before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the people. And then, what the khashyo, and they, are, have, they have an awe within their presence before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they remember Allah much. Wa kathratu dhikrillah. Wa sawm. Fasting. Right? Wa salah. And... Prayers, and then he says, This is the bombshell. This is what we don't want to hear. And they always look after their neighbors. Now, Jiran in this particular context, in the Arabic literature, uh, in the Arabic linguistic terms, and in Sarf and Na'u and Qawa'id, of course, I can't speak in, in front of giants. There are giants in Arabic language, I know, who are among us here. Though I'm an Arab, but it doesn't matter. Who cares, right? Arabic is very specific. There is a term in Arabic called nakira. Nakira in English means generic. It's not specific. Jiran here is in that form. It's generic, not specific. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, our followers are always caring for their neighbors, it's not Muslim neighbors. It's anyone who's a neighbor. Anyone. Anything he may be from any walk of life. This kills judgmental approach, right? It kills your judgmental approach. You don't say, ah, oh, he's a Jew, man. So what? He's a human being. He's a Christian. He's a human being. He's a Hindu. He's a human being. He's a Sikh. He's a human being, right? He's a Sabian. He's a human being. Before anything, there's one common denominator between us and everyone else, and that is our humanity. And I've always said that. If you want a synonym term to Muslim, I will tell you what it is. It's human. It's to learn how to be human. When you learn how to be human, you become a submitter. And when you are a submitter, you are within the folds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you will be receptive to the teachings of Allah and to the instructions of Allah because you have no hatred in your heart. And even if you don't like someone, look at this concept from a purely Islamic point of view, but a juristic point of view, by the way. يعني مسألة فقهية. It's a fiqhi issue. Let's say I don't like someone. Why? Do I have the right? Yeah, because these are emotions, right? But emotions has to be what? Has to be in conformity with the law of Allah. They don't go above the law of Allah. Right? Even when it is an emotional outburst or an emotional feeling. When I don't like someone, I have no right to usurp him of his right. If I don't like someone, I cannot deny him a good quality. If I don't like someone, I cannot take his right away to existence. 
to respect, to value, to presence, to sharing, to common uh, uh, issues of interest. Because he's a human being, he has a right. He has a right. Look at what Allah says. I'm not talking from my own pockets. I'm talking from the Quran because I said these 15 nights we want to live with the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala yajrimannakum. Wala yajrimannakum means what in Arabic? Wala yahmilannakum. Do not allow yourselves to be prone towards what? Wala yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala alla ta'dilu. I'dilu huwa akrabu taqwa Do not allow the animosity of people towards you. If someone doesn't like you, right? And he tells you, I don't like you, right? Allah is saying this in the Quran. It says, if you know a group of people or an individual that says to you, I don't, I don't see eye to eye with you, you know? Allah says what? If this happens or you have that feeling towards that person, do not allow that feeling to what? Not to remain in a state of justice towards that person. No, you deal with him on the basis of justice. This takes me to an incident in passing, I say, how we can be inspired in action by the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen. There was a person during the time of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, salawat alayhi salam alayhi, in Kufa, when Imam moved to Kufa, sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Tell me the time. His name is Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais. If I want to rate him from 1 to 10 in terms of hatred, he will be 10. That's how much he hated Ali ibn Abi Talib. Salawat alayhi wa salam. Open animosity to Ali ibn Abi Talib. In fact, history tells us what? When Amir al muminin used to go on the pulpit, on the mimbar, in Masjid al-Kufa, he used to go and bring a lecture or a member outside the masjid, and he would speak against Ali ibn Abi Talib. And Amir al muminin the head of the state, is giving his speech. Imagine someone is addressing the nation. Friday prayer is what? An address to the nation, right? At that time, Amir al muminin was the governor of at least 28 different states. Yani he's a leader of 28 different countries, right? In, in today's standard, he's giving his khutbah from the member. Ash'ath ibn Qais is giving a what? A counter khutbah. So the friends and the companions of Amir al-Mu'mineen goes to Amir al-Mu'mineen after the khutbah. says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, he's at it again. <laughs> yani it's not the first time. Huh? Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, he's at it again, this son of a gun. Right? He's saying things about you. Should we stop him? He said, leave him for as long as he is not interfering in state security. If it's against me personally, let him vent. Ajeeb. Ajeeb. Let, let someone speak about me. You know? I'll choke him with my turban. Huh? Why? Because I think I have an authority over him. I'm a sheikh. Uh, big deal. Big deal. Right? You don't have an authority over people. Right? So he speaks against him. Look, it doesn't end here. Allahu Akbar, how beautiful Ahlul Bayt are. You know why? Because they principled themselves with the Quran. Huh? They are the children of the Quran. They are the heirs of the Quran. They are the representation of the Quran. Ali ibn Abi Talib himself says, this is the silent Quran and I am the spoken Quran. Right? He says to his companions, when the fate used to come. You know what fate? Fate means, you know, the money, zakat, jizya, khums, whatever, that used to come into the Muslim revenue state. He divides the Muslim revenue. This poor person, this guy has this entitlement. He said, and this is for Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais. Huh? What is this, Ya Amir? Ash'ath ibn Qais. The one who's criticizing you and talking about you. He said, wala yajrimannakum. He says, don't allow the animosity of people to cause you to be unjust. He is one of the subjects of my state. And he has a right to Muslim money. Ajeeb. Ajeeb. This is standards. This is value. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we've brought the system first and then we created you. Allama al-Quran khalaqal. 
in Sam so that you can know that your purpose is within the folds of that Quran. So, I mean, uh, uh, he continues, uh, uh, Imam al Baqir. He said, and they always look after their neighbors. Min al fuqara wa ahlil maskana. They always go towards their neighbors and look after them among the poor and those who are deprived. Wal-gharimeen. Who are the gharimeen? The ones who had fallen under debt. Genuinely. Genuinely. Because huh? a Muslim is not a fool. Al-mu'minu kayyisun qatin. Fatin. Al-mu'minu kayyisun fatin. Laysa bikisi qutnin. Right? A mu'min is clever and very aware. He's not a sack of cotton. Because if you change the dots on these two words, it turns to be a bag of cotton. Right? So this kayis can read keys. Or fatin can be read cotton. So a mu'min is aware, alert. He knows he's not fooled by someone. But if someone genuinely fell under debt, you should go to his rescue if you are able to do so. These are the qualities. Wal aytam. And the orphans, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. When it comes to orphans, we all have a soft spot, right? But there are others that need our help as well. Then he says, um, uh, uh, Imam al-Baqir, he said, this is very beautiful. Wasitkul hadith. When they speak, they speak the truth. You know, that's a quality of the followers of Ahlul Bayt. Wakanu, Allah, Allah, look at this. وَكَانُوا أُمَنَاءَ عَشَائِرِهِمْ فِي الْأَشْيَاءِ And they are known to be leaders in everything among their people. Whatever, whenever they are, they are best at anything they do. Or they try to be leaders in anything they do. Pioneers. You know, our forefathers were pioneers. They left us with that setup. They left us with the legacy that one among them one day wakes up in the morning and says, this building is fi sabilillah. Right? Right? And we inherited this. Right? We inherited this. We must continue that heritage. We cannot become stagnant. We need to continue the legacy of our forefathers. And these people who need to take over from our forefathers are not the elders. May Allah, you know, honor them and grant them long life, you know. It is those who are youth. Why? Because the youth now represent half of our present and all of our future. If we lose them, that means we would have lost half of our present and all of our future. 